whenever I see a banana leaf placed in front of me, mm -hmm. that means it's a meal that's going to be memorable. <laughs> The flavors of that shaple curry, I can taste that chili hit right away. Mm. I'm definitely tasting the creaminess of the coconut and somewhere in there a bit of the aromatic flavors that come from the hard spices. Well, I thought we had a quiet start to our lunch here. But uh, if you look at the uh, flurry of dishes that have emerged since, some sambar and that is the pepper chicken for oh, the pepper chicken so i think that will be a good combination with the matta rice and that coconut fish curry mm. brown mango curry ah chemin kerala chicken curry kerala chicken curry i don't think we can keep up with ajita's service here <laughs> uh, there's more and more dishes that are finding their way to our table. Vegetable fish curry. Vegetable fish curry. And why do you call Hello it that? Namaskaram folks, this is Kripal Amana, Gourmet on the Road and you're watching Food Lovers TV. I hope you're doing well, I hope you're staying safe and strong. Today we are in sunny Kerala, God's own country and I've just arrived in Kochi. In fact, I just landed a couple of hours ago and I'm here on the invitation of a gentleman who wants to take the culinary culture, the cuisines of Kerala beyond its borders to the rest of the world. Namaskaram. 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 Thank you very much for inviting us to your beautiful state. You're welcome. Our pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Welcome. I can already smell the aromas <laughs> huh, of some food that's emanating from the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it's Kerala. It's Kerala. So I'm with Mr. and Mrs. Cherian. We are here, of course, to partake of a meal with them. Are you familiar with Kerala food? I'm familiar with Kerala cuisine and uh, in fact given an opportunity you can always count me in for a Kerala meal. So when I heard of this invitation that was being extended to us, I lost no time in taking a flight here to Kochi to taste that food. I think Kerala food is very unique in its nuances, in the ingredients that go in. That's right, it's quite spicy also. We, <laughs> have, uh, we use uh, a lot of coconut. Uh, you know, the, the ingredients are Coconut quite oil is the base. Yes. Yeah. Since I come from Karnataka, I think there are similarities mm -hmm. in terms of the use of coconut, in terms of some of the flavors. But then I think Kerala food has its own nuances, right? right. For you, it's not just the cuisine that you enjoy, but this is also part of your mission, part of your work. Yes, so because uh, you know we see an opportunity where we can take uh, the Kerala cuisine beyond Kerala, beyond the borders of uh, Kerala and India. Oh, the banana leaf is set. This is the tushanila. Tushanila. Yes. Okay, and that refers to this point. Yeah, yeah. The the tip of the banana leaf. Okay. Yeah. It's not the half, it's a full banana leaf, but the tip portion is called the tushanila. Fantastic. And that's the most uh, auspicious part of the banana leaf for serving the Kerala style meal. Wonderful. And the other thing that I've always observed is whenever I see a banana leaf placed in front of me, mm -hmm. that means it's a meal that's going to be memorable. <laughs> uh, there's, I think we associate the plantain leaf with that whole celebration. Yeah. Right? So whether it's let's say a Bali Ale Uta in Karnataka mm -hmm. or let's say a Sadhya yeah. here in uh, Kerala. That's the Kappa. Ah. The pure car. And so Kappa is typically associated with toddy shop food, uh, right? Yeah. This is actually originally it's uh, it has its roots from South America, cassava. Yeah. 
and this became so popular during the you know old famine days mm -hmm. in the 60s became very popular because there was less of rice and wheat etc and uh, became part of the Kerala meal. This yeah. dish is called Kappa Puruku. Puruku is actually boiled and mashed and then we use a lot of spices. So I can see the chilli, I can see some mustard seeds in there. Like the coconut oil, I think no Kerala dish is complete without the curry. Yeah, there is a dash of coconut oil also there. Ah, this is the, the fish curry. The fish curry. Curry. The flavors of that chablis curry, I can taste that chili hit right away, right? Yeah. So you've got the heat that comes from the red chili. I think this must be a combination of Kashmiri and also some uh, very spicy chili in this. And uh, you have tamarind also. Mm. So what you're really tasting first is the heat that comes from the chili and somewhere in that you're tasting a bit of the sour edge. And actually with the tapioca, I think it's a great combination because the tapioca since it's a starchy sort of a staple, yeah, it, it, well. it cuts it down, right? It cuts That's the right. chili down. Yeah. And what fish is this, sir? Yellowfin tuna. Yellowfin tuna. And mm. locally we call it kera. This is a fish that's also very meaty, isn't it? This it's is very meaty. It, it grows to a fairly large size, around 10 kilos. Can grow up to 100 kilos also. Mm. And I think with the chapale curry, it's dynamite. I think if you were to have this curry with, let's say, plain mutta rice, you'll probably have steam coming out of your ears, right? So, therefore, this is the combination. People eat with red rice also. Yeah. Also. I think we've uh, made a fiery start to our uh, Tushanila lunch. Mm. I also like the shallots in that curry. There's a bit of sweetness that comes from the shallots. This is called idiapam. It's made of uh, rice flour and then it's squeezed out uh, so like, the, like noodles. So, so the extruder. It goes well with the ah, some chicken, chicken, stew. chicken stew. There's provenance to the dishes, right? So this is more like Koteam side or? Oh, yeah. you, you, you know it. So, so this yeah. is more like a Syrian Christian, Syrian sort Christian of preparation. Well, initially when you uh, put the oil and get all the hard spices in, will there be coconut oil used then? I'm definitely tasting the creaminess of the coconut and somewhere in there a bit of the aromatic flavors that come from the hard spices. Hmm? Yeah. Cinnamon, Cinnamon cloves, nutmeg. And the warmth in this would probably come from some pepper, is it? Pepper, yeah. yes. Black pepper. Hmm. I think the curries are spot on in their flavors. This is the ah, this is the kadala curry. The kadala curry. This also That's goes very well with the idiot pump. So typically the kadla curry is also eaten with the putta. Putta or idiapam. Or idiapam. So this is the Bengal gram. Kadla curry. Mm. So this is a combination, the idiapam and either the stew or the kadla curry. I think two very different flavor profiles. The stew is mild, creamy, a bit of the aromatic flavors that you get from the whole spices, be it the cinnamon, a bit of the cardamom, the tingling warmth of the pepper, which is ever so mild. And I think this is more like a rustic sort of a preparation. Yeah, it has a mixture of all the masalas. Mm. So do you toast the spices before you grind them? Yes. Yeah. You get a depth of flavor that comes from that. Whereas I think out here, the spices are probably not toasted. Not they toasted. go directly into the oil. You know, it's interesting as to how warmth can be at different levels, right? Like for example, out here, you're definitely feeling the brashness of the chilli. But out here, that pepper has a very mild, lingering sort of a caress. And when it comes to a stew, the potato is a must. Well, I thought we had a quiet start to our lunch here. But uh, if you look at the uh, flurry of dishes that have emerged since, I've got a toran. Avial. This is uh, kutgari. Kutgari. Uh, that's with the kadala and the vegetables. Fantastic. So toran is typically a lot of coconut. Sliced the vegetables, cooked with coconut, grated coconut. Mm. There's a bit of a sweetness of the uh, coconut that I'm co tasting in that toran. Yes. 
so when it comes to a meal here in this part of kerala it's always a matta rice yeah huh? it's always matta rice some sambar mm. and that is the pepper chicken for oh, the okay. pepper chicken you know usually we have uh, two kinds of sambars uh-huh. one is the meal sambar hmm. which is actually taken along with the rice and we also have the tiffin sambar which uh-huh. is uh, mostly taken with uh, idli dosa idli dosa okay that's very similar to how we do it also in karnataka mm-hmm. so you will have a, a tiffin breakfast sambar mm-hmm. which is much thinner and there the objective is for that sambar to soak into soak that idli that's right Whereas your meal sambar will be a little more thick, thick, with, thick. with the vegetables. So the breakfast, the idli sambar will not have vegetables. Kalan, ah, ah. the yogurt curry. And what vegetable is there in this? Raw banana. There certainly is a fair bit of the sourness that comes from the mm-hmm. yogurt. So also, I think when it comes to a Kerala meal, it's like a combination of different flavors, right? Oh yes. yes. Like for example, this one is very sour. These are more savory. The other dishes that I tasted. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Fish curry with coconut milk. Fish curry with coconut milk. So this is again with the tuna. Tuna, yellow fin tuna. In this particular curry, mm-hmm. I can definitely taste more of the flavor of the tuna in oh. the curry in itself. That's right. Whereas in the shapila curry, I couldn't taste so much the flavor of the tuna. Whereas here, I think it's the tuna that definitely. Uh, leads it in the flavor yeah, front coconut milk is there yeah. it's mild it's very mild right mm and this is a pepper chicken mm. how do you find it again the flavor of the aromats the roasted spices some fennel some star anise some mace i love the flavor of that masala you know sometimes when you're eating meals like this it's also about bringing things together right so i've got my matta rice with the coconut fish curry i feel that the flavor of the tuna is a bit stronger in that but suddenly i've realized that i also have this pepper chicken and that pepper chicken is aromatic aromatic with the hard spices so i think that will be a good combination with the matta rice and that coconut fish curry in a meal like this sometimes you feel a little overwhelmed by the number of dishes that are coming and so initially you are approaching each one trying to figure it out but then comes a point when you are fairly comfortable with what's on your leaf and that's when you get confident and start mixing things <laughs> and finding things that appeal to you i think that's a beautiful thing about food right yeah this uh, pepper chicken is brilliant amongst the many other dishes that i have found interesting as well some more uh, matta rice which can only mean one thing there are some more interesting dishes that i'm going to meet so the kaal i think is also a great way to break to cleanse your palate so with its sourness get, get ready with the next if you get ready for the next course because i already have some matta rice that's come on to my leaf brown mango curry ah chemin chemin manga manga curry manga curry thank you yes. These are the small prawns. I think when the prawns are smaller, always the flavor is better, flavor isn't is it? Better, yes. Some tiny prawns in there, some onions. Get some of that. The chor. Chor. Into that prawn mango curry. Hmm. I also like the texture of the prawn. Hmm. Kerala chicken curry. Kerala chicken curry. I don't think we can keep up with Ajita's service here. Ah. <laughs> uh, there's more and more dishes that are finding their way to our table so this is what a meal typically at home is like for you it's not a typical meal ha huh. it is a meal for a guest like ah you. for a special guest like you thank you very much sir and i must say i'm relishing it Here again, Kerala chicken curry. I can taste the sweetness that comes from onions being caramelized, roasted. Yes. Is that the base for this curry? It is. It is. Mm. Vegetable fish curry. Vegetable fish curry. 
And why do you call you know, it that? It's a fish curry, but instead of fish, they are using vegetable. You know, the Christians when they are on Lent. Oh, okay. You know. Just you would have during Lent. Yeah, fish curry without fish. Ah, okay. So the masala is the same as a fish curry. Fish curry. So you basically use vegetables that would soak up that masala. That's right. That's right. And in this case, it's the ivy gourd. And what do you call it in Kerala? Kovikya. 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 Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, correct. Ah. Mm. Oh, the spice. Spicy also. Ah, uh, it's the coconut milk. Coconut yeah. milk. Yes. But then there is the chili. Mm-hmm. That kind of has gripped hold of my throat right away. So basically, this is not like mock meat or anything like that. It's basically a fish curry, and when you cannot eat fish, it's really vegetable. the vegetables go into it. Yeah. So I guess even vegetarian uh, Keralaites would eat this. Hmm. And I suppose in the fish curry, anyway, the fish has its own flavors which are quite dominant. Yeah. So I guess you need to probably season that curry season, a little season. more yeah. mm-hmm. to give it that punch, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure there's some shallots to that go into this. Yeah. Well, if the meal was that big, can the desserts be far behind? Palada paisan. That's rice flakes. Ada is made from rice, and that's cooked and with milk. Cooked with milk. And what is used to sweeten this? Sugar. 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 Here we use jaggery, but this is a jack. Uh, jack jack fruit. Yeah. Chakka paisan. The chakka paisan. I can definitely taste the richness of the milk in this. This is almost like uh, reduced milk. Hmm. That's a rich dessert. You know, when I thought of a palada, I thought it'd be very light, like a paisan almost. But this is quite rich. Yeah, it's concentrated. Yeah, yeah, in its flavors. I think on that note we should shift to the chakka paisan. So this is what uh, just the jaggery syrup and the <coughs> jackfruit that is pulverized. Earlier it used to be just the summer fruit. Yeah. Nowadays what people are doing just pulp. Three sixty five days you can. Store. You can store. Ah. Well, would you believe it if I were to tell you that all the 15-20 dishes that we tasted, right from the idiyapam to the kappa, matta rice, garden, the pepper chicken, and palada paisam, and also the chakka paisam, all these dishes, you too can make at home in a few minutes without even knowing how to cook. You know that's the beauty of this fair and the vision that Mr. Cherian has for Kerala cuisine. All this food that we tasted came yes. out of packets. Packets. Of course, when I accepted Mr. Cherian's invitation to visit Kochi and taste this food, I knew that these were ready-to-eat foods. But I said I don't want to talk about it before I taste it, right? Because only once you taste, then you realize what the food's all about. And I think in the past, people have had ready-to-eat foods, etc. Where you very distinctly know that this is a ready-to-eat sort of a food. But out here, all the dishes that I tasted, for the most part, mm-hmm. are the sort of dishes that if you were to let's say serve it at home, maybe with a bit of garnish on top, maybe with some curry leaf, maybe with a little drizzle of fresh coconut oil, or put some fresh grated coconut, you could easily fool someone into saying that you are a master in Kerala cuisine. <laughs> huh? Very true. Yeah, there's two things: the art of making good food and also art of preserving it without preservatives. That's where the food science comes in. So we have the culinary experts, the chefs who are exquisite uh, craftsmen. That's one side to it. But then they also we have the science behind to pack it without any preservatives. Oh, you mean to say all this food that we tasted now? Mm-hmm. Is food that's without any preservatives. Yes, without any preservatives. And how do you manage that? We use a technology called retort technology. So let's say the fish curry that we tasted, mm-hmm. the shapila curry. So that fish curry was prepared by your chefs. Yes. Using traditional recipes that you would probably mm-hmm. find in the toddy shops. Yes. And uh, using that recipe, then it was packaged using this technology. That's right. Yeah. And also, 
we can store it at room temperature. You don't need a refrigerator. Okay. It has a shelf life of uh, 18 months. 18 months? Yes. When you keep it over a period of time, doesn't the texture alter? Uh, theoretically, it should, but if you are able to use the right uh, the conditions of processing without overheating without underheating so that's why, why, what I mean by right uh, conditions of processing uh, we, are, we will be able to maintain the taste for 18 months and beyond you have to heat and eat it there are three ways of heating either you can put the pouch itself in hot water or you can open the pouch and put it into a tawa and heat it or you can uh, put it into a microwavable dish and, uh, heat, and heat, it. heat it. You could be in Bengaluru, you could be in Bombay or let's say you could be in Delhi or perhaps in San Francisco mm -hmm. and you are missing your grandmother's avial. All that you need is a packet of this product and it's called Tasty Nibbles. Tasty yeah. Nibbles, yeah. Fantastic. You know, having tasted the food and uh, having enjoyed it, I would like to pay a visit to your factory and take a look at how it all comes together. You're most welcome. You can, you can visit our factory and then see how it is uh, being done. So we've tasted all these delicious Kerala dishes. Let's head now to the Tasty Nibbles factory and see how it all comes together. I've never been through anything like this. A sanitized, hygiene approach like this. So this is the Kerala fish Kerala curry. Fish curry. That's a very traditional, traditional Kerala one. fish curry, Kerala coconut fish, yeah, fish yes. curry. But the technology in which you are processing it after it's prepared. Yes, that, that is, is a retort and that technology makes this. The flavors that I've tasted in the masalas, the gravies have been spot on. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating!